Hi everyone, welcome to the penguin exhibit. My name is Kevin Blakely, I'm a zookeeper here at the Central Park Zoo. Today I'm going to show you how to feed a penguin. First thing you need, you have to assemble your penguins. You'll notice I have uh, my handy GoPro camera with a head mount. That way you can see exactly what I'm seeing. I'll go over a little bit what we have here. We've got uh, a bin of capelin. Capelin is a North Atlantic saltwater smelt. It's what we're feeding the penguins. This is their primary diet. They also get trout and silver sides. Over on this side, I've got my, uh, my sheet for recording what they ate. This is the PM feed that I'm gonna do now. So what you see on the sheet here is the AM feed. This is what they've already eaten. I'm gonna mark the PM feed in red pen so that um, we can tell the difference between who ate in the morning and who ate in the PM. So uh, the next thing you're gonna to have to do is learn their names. So I'm gonna go over their names real quick and you'll remember them. Um, this is Blanca, Drumstick. That's uh, Marbles, Tonic, Sky, Durbin. Okay, you're not gonna remember them all. Who am I kidding? Um, but if you're gonna be a penguin keeper, you're gonna to have to learn all their names because uh, as I feed them, you're going to have to mark down who ate what. At the end of the day, we know exactly who got what. It's a really good way for us to just keep track of um, any changes in, uh, in how they're eating. It's, a, it's the first sign uh, if anything's wrong, they typically stop eating. Uh, and it would just be a sign that we need to look at them a little closer. Now, if you ever come and visited us in the summertime uh, to one of our penguin feeds here, you'll notice there's usually someone sitting on the rock over here. Um, we typically will have another keeper or an intern or a volunteer, and they will actually record who eats what. So I'll just call out the bird's name and they'll mark it down. Um, while the zoo is closed right now, we're working on a reduced staff. So I'm going to be doing everything myself here. I'm gonna be feeding and marking down. Um, I typically will feed about four birds in a row. It's about as many as I can remember in my head at once. And, and then I mark the four down. So as we look around our colony here, you're going to see a few birds that are starting to look a little rough. You see drumstick here. She's missing about half of her feathers. Uh, you'll see a couple in the back there that are getting pretty large. We're right at the beginning of our molting season. Um, and so typically their feathers look, uh, are, are gonna start getting a little rough. They're gonna start putting on weight. These guys go through what's called a catastrophic molt. Um, they put on a lot of weight. Imagine um, in South Africa, they, uh, when, they, when they go through their molt, they're gonna drop all their feathers. The water's pretty cold there, so obviously they can't go out and eat during that time. So they're gonna put this weight on. They're gonna spend about two weeks on land and they're gonna live off that fat. So, before we get into the molt, the guys are going to be eating a lot. They're going to get really large. And then as they start to lose their feathers, they're going to stop eating for a while. And this is typically, this is just the way it would happen in nature. So it really happens kind of the same way here. We're going to, we're going to see a very similar. Uh, so, so I'm going to go ahead and start feeding. Um, and really, I'm just keeping track of my head. That's Blanca drumstick. This is Sky. You'll notice uh, they can actually catch their fish. Well, they all can except for Durbin. And so Blanca got two. And we've got uh, Durbin got one, Sky got one, and um, Vincent got one. And that's pretty much it. And we're gonna go through this feed then. Uh, typically, it's gonna take about a half an hour. Um, the birds you see out here right now, this is about, uh, I would say three quarters of them. We still have some inside. We keep uh, a couple of our older ones in only because it, uh, it takes a while to walk out here. And so, uh, and it's a little chilly right now. We're still, this is still a little chilly for them to be outside. So um, they're outside mostly for the demonstration. Normally we would feed them inside. So, so I'm going to go ahead and mark down. We got 
Phoenix tonic. <clears throat> so you guys probably don't usually get to hear their names. Like I said, this is Blanca. That's Burns. That's Marbles, Drumstick, Leroy. Piccolo. Uh, can't tell who that is next to him. Bird getting large. Um, this is this is Durbin, Dassin. That's Sam on the rock over there. In the back is Twiggy with the blonde beak. She's the only one with a blonde beak. And then uh, Phoenix, Georgia. So Phoenix and Georgia are a pair. And then on the rock is Armando. You'll see he's getting pretty big and his feathers are getting rough. He's going to be molting soon. He's in what we would refer to as pre-molt. Um, he'll be dropping his feathers soon. This is Vincent waddling towards us. And Burns, Burns and Vincent are a pair. And this is Sam. Sam, are you hungry? So we got Drumstick. Now Drumstick's gonna eat a lot because she's in pre-molt. And I just gave her a herring, so she had to think about it. <laughs> I typically don't eat herring, but sometimes they're mixed in with the capelin and I try and sneak them in there. So she got three, Tonic got two, and Blanca. Now you might wonder how I'm identifying them all. And you'll notice a lot of them have wing bands that are different colors on different wings. Right wing means it's a female, left wing means it's a male. Uh, but you'll also notice as you look around, there's a lot of them that don't have bands on them. We, they either have fallen off or we take them off because they're in pre-molt. Uh, when they get big, their wings also get, get big and so the bands get tight, so we take them off. But when you see these guys every day, you really kind of just learn you can learn to recognize them uh, even without the bands. Um, their, their mannerisms, even how they catch a fish, uh, actually even where they stand in the exhibit is a, is a key to us of, uh, to help, help identify them. So as you can see, I've kind of lost my penguins. This is typically the sign that they're full and they're ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to feed a penguin. I hope you're enjoying the videos that we're posting today. Happy World Penguin Day. Um, while, uh, while all this is going on, you guys take care of yourself at home. We'll take care of the animals here and we can't wait to see you back here when this is all over with. Bye guys.